Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Good morning, Calvary. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. You know, we are just a week away from Easter, I guess technically a little over a week, but I hope that you're going to join us for Easter. If you are local to like Havasu or Parker, we would love it if you'd come out to one of our services. If you are watching remote somewhere and you don't have a home church to visit at, uh, then we'd love it if you would watch online. We've got five service times, all of them online, all of them in person. Again, if you're here in Lake Havasu, uh, two serv- or one service in Parker, soon to be two services when that building opens. But hey, we'd love to have you out here and uh, love to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus with you on Easter. Uh, But we're also a week away from Good Friday. And um, as we approach that, and we've been talking about the the final days and final hours of Jesus' life, and uh, it gets a little heavy in our passage today. And I wanna reflect on how this connects as we celebrate Good Friday. It's the day that we remember Jesus' death. And it seems odd to call this good. And so I wanna reflect on what happened on that day from uh, Matthew 27 here, but also talk about, hey, why do we call it Good Friday? What is good about this day? So let's take a look. I wanna read this passage of scripture for us and then talk about what that means for us today. Matthew 27, starting in verse 45 says this. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness all over the land until the ninth hour. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama shabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge and filled it with sour wine and put on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, a curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split and the tombs also were opened. Many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised and coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, truly this was the son of God. There are also many women there looking on from a distance who followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. So this is a heavy passage as we get to the final culmination of not just Jesus' ministry and teaching on earth, not just his arrest and trial and and prosecution, but also the end of his life. That moment of him suffering, of him crying out to God in anguish and him finally yielding his spirit and surrendering to death. And again, this is the day that has been coined Good Friday on that Friday that he died. And so why do we call it good? And maybe you know the answer to this, but, but I always think that it's good to be reminded of things that are so essential. But there's three reasons why it's good for us. It's good because Jesus' death paid for our sins. See, we all have all sinned. We've all accrued uh, what we should pay as a penalty for our sins. We all deserve punishment from God for the fact that we have sinned and rebelled against what he has commanded us to do. But Jesus' death was the substitution. He stepped in and paid that on our behalf. And so when we look at what we should have paid and now don't have to because of Jesus, that is a very good thing. It's a good thing because Jesus' death brought us back to a place of relationship with God the Father. The Bible says that our sins create a separation between us and God. There's distance relationally. Now we can't be close to the one that we're supposed to be in relationship with as how he created us. But when Jesus came and paid for our penalty on the sin, he came and brought forgiveness and restoration to that relationship. So everyone who believes in Jesus as their savior now has an opportunity to be restored in relationship to God the Father and be in daily community and conversation and closeness with him that we didn't have the opportunity because of our sin. But finally, it's good news because Jesus' death brings the hope of heaven. Uh, scripture says that everyone who believes in Jesus earns the, the, uh, the, the reward of eternity in heaven. Eternity in a place where there's perfection, there is no pain, there is no death, there's no grieving or sadness or brokenness any longer. But there's simply rejoicing in perfection the way that we were created originally before sin destroyed everything. 
And that is possible for those who say Jesus is the Son of God and Savior of the world. He died on a cross for my sins and rose three days later, and I want to follow him with my life. See, when we look at these realities of how he took our punishment, how he restored us relationally to the Father because of that forgiveness, and how we have heaven because of that, then there's certainly a reason to call it a Good Friday, even in the midst of realizing that he had to suffer greatly for us to have those things. So over these next seven days, as we approach Good Friday, as we approach Easter weekend next weekend, I hope that you spend time reflecting on what Jesus has done for you. And I hope that that draws you to a place of truly being thankful and grateful for what he's done and that creating just a genuine heart of worship for him this weekend as you worship, but also each day as we worship him for how much he loves us. So I hope that you have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time and hopefully see you on Easter.